Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Pete and Jeremy's D&D &D time. Uh, this is game... So you're saying game two. This is game one this evening. An adventure that I have entitled The Tooth Fairy. But before we dive into that adventure, or rather, as we dive into that adventure, the four of you adventurers, uh, Yuchankis and Adolsha, Zuzip and Sword. You are some of the most powerful adventurers in Bartholomew's adventuring company. And you know that whenever the four of you are sent on an adventure, there's something, well, something serious is the matter. And Yuchankis, in particular, you woke up this morning with something, a feeling that I think you've never felt before, a feeling that you understood and realized something was very wrong. And that is, you had a toothache. Mm -hmm. And as we all know, Yutankis, uh, being a lizard folk who relies very heavily upon your teeth, you care very well for them. Right. And so, I mean, as far as lizard folk do, um, the four of you have been sent by Bartholomew up to the Sacred Vale, or rather to a, a village just outside of the Sacred Vale, on the edge of the forest. It is a, a village of bunny folk who are, are kind of endemic to the region and have requested aid regarding some powerful fae that is uh, teetering upon godhood within the Vale. The four have been traveling for a few days on a rickety wagon. Normally, the approach to the Vale is a bright and sunny endeavor, but it's been rather dark, overcast and gray as you travel through the, uh, the hilly terrain that, that surrounds the forest of the Vale proper. And so, you've just been riding on this wagon, I, I presume, um, pulled by draft horses or, or the like. Um, what are, uh, yeah, what have the four of you been doing? What have you been doing and how have you been, uh, I guess, where are you on the wagon as you've been traveling for the better part of the day? I've been driving. <laughs> Sword, you're right up in front with, uh, at the reins. Uh, who's, uh, what, what's pulling the wagon, Sword? Is it uh, a mule or a horse or some other more uh, obscure and crazy pack animal? I wouldn't know how to ex exactly describe it. They look like horses, but they're... It's not a species I'm exactly familiar with. They're definitely more fey in origin, but not a unit. Interesting. So it's some kind of, I assume, uh, very, very sleek skin, almost ethereal, kind of wispy uh, hair and tail kind of, kind of creature, but oh, very yeah. much solid and, and uh, material. Yes. Interesting. Are they like different colors or are they like purples and, and blues or are they kind of like normal horses but just a little bit off? They're like normal horses, you know, the kind that have the uh, that have the fur comes around their hooves. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah, uh, they they, they kind of have like an ethereal glow to them. Their eyes are a light blue and glowing light blue and uh, it's almost as they have like a yeah. sorry about that uh, it's almost as if they have like a uh, uh, like uh, yeah. glyphic like aura to it, right yeah or in like uh, just kind of like these tri uh, almost tribal design like lines uh, glowing uh, across their body, interesting. Or pulsing as a, if a, as if it was blood going through the veins. Oh, it's like almost like vine-like veins. Yeah, or more tattooy. Yeah, I, I dig it. So, sword, you've been at the reins with the with these horse-like creatures. Um, where uh, where's everyone else on the wagon? Uh, I'm in the up. back soaking up the sun. Is this like a big covered wagon, Zuzip? Is it like a big Conestoga wagon? Or is this like a flatbed truck of wagons? 
the canvas covering reminds me of my sailing ship and may come in handy later. So I am on top of the canvas roof, spread out, as I've been feeling a little less and less light every day. Uh, I believe that summer is coming to a close. Indeed, and especially as you've been approaching the Sacred Veil, that normal, sunny disposition. The Sacred Veil is a place of both good and evil, dark and light, but usually the light is pretty predominant. Um, but such is not the case today as you've been approaching. Uh, as you've been getting closer and closer to your destination, you've noticed the sky is ever darker, and the warmth of the sun just that little bit cooler upon your petals. Still enough to be a pleasant bask, but for how much longer, you're not sure. Have you been doing anything else throughout the ride? Have you been, I assume you have a pretty good vantage. Have you been uh, watching the uh, surrounding hillscapes and the like, or, or just completely basking and not worrying about anything else? No, I can very much try to learn these uh, vehicles, parentheses, land, just as much as I can as the vehicles, parentheses, water. I want to maybe someday be proficient in those, too. I see. So you've been, you've been relaxing, enjoying the sun, but you've also been observing S.W.O.R.D. and seeing how they've been uh, kind of piloting the thing for all intents and purposes. That is correct. Excellent. Now, S.W.O.R.D., are you proficient in land vehicles? Yes, I am. And animal handling. Uh. Oh wow! So actually, you're probably been getting some pretty good, pretty good insight observing this. Uh, and Adolsha, it sounded like you were you're about to speak up. Where, where do we find you? Uh, yeah, and, this? and Adolsha's actually at the very top of the wagon, just like just having her legs like kind of uh, hanging off the covered part. Oh, just like uh, uh, like balance on like one of the thicker beams on the front. Uh, she's mm -hmm. just been up there just admiring the mystical tarpons that. Uh, that uh, sword's been like, you know, making them pull the a wagon. Mm hmm. Yeah, because so, since, uh, since Adosh has been living in the Fey Wild for a long while, she happens to know a bit of the names of uh, several of the Fey creatures. So you've been basically, there's these little, little posts that stick out on the front where lanterns hang down uh, on either side of the uh, kind of rider's post out or the, uh, uh, the driver's kind of seat out front. Um, and I assume you've just been sitting on top of one of those, just kind of observing um, these these mystical horses. And Adosha, are there any other kind of fey creatures that are almost tied to these horses? Do we see like little fey fireflies or things appear? You know, um, do these horses have any sort of effects on the land that they walk? Do they leave trails of flowers in their wake? Or what, what do we, what is that like? Well, uh, most people cannot really see see such, but I mean, Andosha does notice that uh, there's a little uh, sparkling of dust from each little step. Mm. Like, uh, where, the, if they, where the fur and the hooves are, there's just a tiny bit of something akin to pixie dust just, like, sparkling down on the ground, and more often than not, that makes flowers grow in a few days. Ah, I gotcha. So you've just been observing and kind of smiling to yourself, knowing there'll be at least a pleasant, a pleasant, tree, a pleasant trail in your wake. Are there any like footprints that they leave, or do, are they totally printless? Uh, they, 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 well, in the mist, I'm pretty sure in the material realm, they leave footprints. Ah, uh, in the Feywild. In the Feywild, uh, they do leave footprints, but the growth of like flowers and other plant life is much more uh, quickened or accelerated. <laughs> I got so it's almost like they don't in the Feywild because of how quick everything grows. Yeah, I love it. All right, so Dulce, you're just up there. Are you, like, talking to them or just hanging out? Uh, she's just hanging out. I mean, she doesn't speak horse. Fair, fair enough. There are probably strict rules about you can't talk to horses if you don't speak horse in the Feywild. It's rude. Um, <laughs> I love it. So, Dulce, you're up there hanging out, just kind of shaking your, shaking your legs. You can almost, and you think it might be the Fey magic, you can almost feel the breeze and the wind uh, uh, against your, your doll legs, uh, your porcelain legs, but uh, you know that can't be true. You're, you're a doll. Um, of course. And Yuchankas, where are yeah. you uh, this whole time? Uh, 
I have a mirror, and I'm looking at my teeth. So you're in the wagon, huddled. There's like, we see everyone sitting on the wagon in various places, enjoying the kind of ride outside. But you're, you're within the wagon. You're like pulling your lip back, and you're looking at your teeth in the mirror. Uh, no, I have my mouth wide open, and I'm <laughs> inspecting my teeth with a series of mirrors. I've probably got <laughs> something akin to a dentist chair. Uh, <laughs> of course. That's why no one else is inside. They can't. And a variety of tools. I see. Have you found anything worrying? No, but I have a toothache. Mm -hmm. I think. I think as you become more like acutely aware, it's, it's almost faded. Like when you first woke up, you just like, oh, something's wrong. But I think, like, as the day's gone on, you've almost been second-guessing yourself to a degree. Like, do I really still have a toothache? No, it's definitely still there, right? It's kind of that, that uh, thought. Process. I'm going to kill whatever did this. <laughs> so Chuck says, you painstakingly and seemingly frightened, almost frightened, uh, frighteningly, inspect your, your toothy maw. Um, which are very wide. I do all um, my own dentistry. <laughs> do you? Do you, Chonkas, have any special tools that, that they use? That's like different. Than, obviously, you've got the dentist chair and the mirror array. The hooks. The drill. You I do have a drill? I, I have it just in case, but I never need to use it. Mm. Are you debating using it now? No. I haven't found a cavity. Mm. I've got Fuji 9. Once you have Fuji 9, you basically are a dentist. So, Yachankis, you're lying there looking at your, you know, uh, lying back in the chair, looking at your teeth, but you're also, like, explaining to everyone else being a dentist and how to be a dentist. Mm. And, uh... Shush, buddy, you're not in this adventure. Uh, and so, <laughs> the four of you have been have been riding in this wagon. Like I said, it's been the better part of a day. It's a bit of a trek to get up to Sacred Vale in the far northeast of the lands. But as you kind of come around the um, a kind of a hill that blocks view of the road beyond, uh, Sword, you see up ahead, well, uh, the signs of a town. I mean, you expect that there's. Uh, a town of play folk in the area that you're supposed to visit. And as you turn, maybe, maybe you were warm, right? Expecting the rush of excited bunny folk running up to you and hopping all over, being all excited to see new people. You don't really see that. Um, you see some white picket fences around little hills that have small circular doors, almost like hobbit hole style from Lord of the Rings. Um, you see gardens outside of these little homes that are way overgrown. And um, yeah, you don't see anyone out and about. No little bunny folk. No nothing. It just seems like a kind of deserted ramshackle place. Uh, actually, you can probably see at the far end of the the road, there's like a deer, maybe, that's like, obviously wandered out from the forest that you're right on the cusp of, that's eating some leaves off a, uh, a bush or a shrub or something. But this is certainly where you're supposed to be. Is it me? Does anybody else notice? It's kind of have a ghost mm, maybe I don't I don't see any ghosts maybe it's breeding season I don't know how many of us work that would imply that there'd be more maybe. I mean have you seen a bunny no I haven't they multiply so fast uh, with me with me having a friend in Tissex mm -hmm. uh could there be, is there any intuition I might have, or could that open up, uh, whether it's not just something that I might know, but 
Uh, it could open up a role of some kind as to what might cause a bunch of bunny folk to hide or flee. Um, so bunny folk, I think uh, I can just, I think you just know, Zuzi, because you have some, some understanding. You have a really good friend who's a bunny folk. You've lived among bunny folk uh, throughout your life. And I think that you're aware that when bunny folk become afraid of something, especially as a community, one of two things happen. They either just go ham, right? They're like, ah, we're gonna beat it up, we're gonna get it. And they just are totally fearless. Or they completely cower and just, the whole society breaks down and they they hide. Mm -hmm. um, that is kind of what it looks like here. I mean, you can see like a messenger bag with like soiled letters just left in the road, like a male man just dropped it, I guess a male bunny folk. Uh, just dr uh, just dropped it on the ground and fled. You know, you see um, these what were nice little picket fences at some point that are just kind of dirty and a little broken. Um, and actually, as you're looking around, you can see that there are boards up against windows to little hobbit holes from the inside. Um, and I oh. think you can pretty reasonably deduce they've, they've holed up. They're scared of something. Okay. Well, I'll uh, I'll slide off the canvas top of the wagon, and uh, walk up to, um, I'll walk up to one of the doors and uh, tap. Yeah, you you hop over. There's a big garden that is normally out front of each of these little houses, but uh, it's very overgrown right now. You don't have any problem getting through it, but you can see that it's been left in in pretty serious disrepair. There are carrots that have grown and are like going bad. Um, carrots are, of, of course, a favorite food of the bunny folk. And yeah, you go over and you, you knock on the door, and they're, uh... I think you hear a very timid voice. Whoops, here! It is Zuzip. I am a friend. I am a Florin. I've come to check in on you. What was that? The adventurer? Yes. The one. That's we came! You hear a voice kind of call out within this little house. It's probably the first one. And uh, you hear a scampering of footprints and scraping of furniture. And the door opens ajar. And you see a set of ears and eyes kind of peeking through the crack of a, a small little uh, um, white furred bunny. Little bun, little bun, let me in. Oh. Or I'll eat your I, house down. I don't want to. Oh. <laughs> the door kind of closes. I don't want to want anybody in. Then you must come out. Uh, roll me a persuasion check. Data agrees with eating the bunny folk, it appears. Uh... <laughs> as if you uh, kind of, I imagine, right, you, you put like a leafy hand on the doors are going to pull it closed, and with your with your words imply that if anything is going to get better here, they're going to need to cooperate with you. And begrudgingly, you see the ears kind of flop down, the eyes kind of sink a little bit. Okay, but no one else is coming out. That's and fine. You see uh, the door kind of open and this figure kind of back out. And as they turn around to face you, closing the door behind them, they're very small, only two and a half, maybe three feet, including ears, um, standing. <laughs> you trying to lick your lips. Uh, they don't seem to notice conveniently um, because they're very distracted. And as they turn around, you can see probably why bunny folk so known for their very large front teeth this bunny folk is toothless there are two kind of gaping holes in his gums where the teeth would otherwise go and they say, yeah the, they kind of shrink up a little bit uh, or as much as they can are you here to stop them stop who the horrible woman in the forest. She was mad that we hadn't sent any teeth. 
He has a very hard time saying teeth. Yes, we will recover your teeth. You need them. Well, kind of like hops over to the garden and pulls a carrot out and just starts gumming on it like, oh. I pick him up. <laughs> and shake him. Who did this? <laughs> I think, like, I think as, as you pick him up, right, there's almost, like, a glint in his eyes. He's all your teeth. Not, like, in the normal way creatures see your teeth and are terrified, but almost like, oh, you have so many teeth, maybe I could. And then you start shaking them. Oh. Uh, you're like, ah! And they just start uh, kind of squealing in terror. What is it? Station check. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Right up. On top of it with the checks, they scream, ice over the water! Uh, they, they say this in a very kind of gummy way, but I'm going to say it in a way that you can understand it. Um, they tell you, uh, she came from over the river in the night. Uh, first, she came for the foxes, and we laughed at them. But then she came here. She, gr she grasped us, and she pulled our teeth out one by one. We couldn't get away. I see. Uh, would Anadosh know anything about, like, Faye that might ha have this sort of tendency? Uh, roll me, uh, ooh. I, I think Arcana check is appropriate for kind of uh, other planar stuff. Alrighty, one second. Unless, do you have an ability to, oh my gosh. Y'all are walking these checks. Uh, and Adolcia, absolutely. Arch Fey can be weird, kind of quirky creatures. This sounds like the work of a very bizarre uh, Arch Fey. Uh, and of course, you've heard stories, especially in this, everyone's heard stories about the Tooth Fairy. Um, but especially you and Adolcia in the Feywild know that those old fairy tales tend to have a lot more truth to them and tend to be a lot darker than most people remember. Uh, with a 21, I think you've heard stories of, of the Tooth Fairy um, as, you know, people would put their their teeth under their pillows at night uh, and they would disappear and a, a silver would be left behind or a copper piece, um, depending on the quality of the tooth. Um, and, you know, most people just, it's not real, whatever. But you know that in some places, it's very real, um, especially as a, as I said in the Feywild, it's uh, almost a tithe paid to the Tooth Fairy uh, in exchange for protection uh, against her wrath. Yeah, and also, like, I think it's over says, so that's why they leave their teeth in, under the pillow over there in Pay's tree. I was wondering why uh, that region always came by for tithes. Oh, we for, we we forgot. <laughs> the bunny folks' ears kind of flopped. You're talking. You're still holding them, right? Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so you've just got them with one hand by the scruff of their bunny folk neck, just kind of like drooping there. Their ears drooped down. Oh, God. oh no no! I've got him with like both hands by by like the, the like under the arms kind of oh. shit. Okay, it, it, this funny folks just giving up. Uh, they're just kind of drooped. Please help us. And it also just kind of side says, "It is a great insult to insult a, a powerful tooth fairy, especially if they are with that region." Since they can be a bit more cruel than others, which just sounds like one of them. I do not have teeth, at least as you do. Will that make me immune to this fairy's charms or magic? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. She, well, flew I mean, off. she flew over. Well, usually they only do this for uh, regions that they are either particularly protective of or reside in, and I don't think you live in the Fey Wild or the uh, Sacred Vale, so you're probably not going to be under her wrath. Mm. These guys, however, looks like they incurred it. Sword, you're a, you're a clerk. What's your passive perception? It's going to be pretty high, right? It is 15. 
Yeah, so mine's a nineteen for what it's worth. I guess I guess I'll figure Chuck. Oh, Chuck, you're kind of focused on this bunny folk. Oh no, I'm um, not. I'm just holding him still. Okay, well, sword. You notice uh, certainly, and you talk. Maybe you also notice there are other like little bunny eyes peering out of windows from the various little hovels around here. Uh, seemingly, most of the little town is probably still here, just holed up. I take it everybody else in town is toothless, too. Pretty much. Well, at, least, hmm. at, at least everyone that, that wasn't already toothless. Is there, I, 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 is I there anybody who isn't toothless? Oh, there's old man Jack. He, he not toothless. Why isn't he toothless? No, I don't, he, he was always toothless. Ah. Why was he toothless? He's really old. Do none of you practice proper dental care? I say, shaking ah! again. <laughs> uh, this this bunny is actually. Let me roll. Uh, this bunny does not pass out, uh, but is clearly terrified of them. Of you. Please let me go. <laughs> uh, I mean, are those pellets on the ground. You have to uh, perhaps toothpaste, mouthwash, floss. Do you floss regularly? Oh, no, I don't. It, it <sighs> makes a terror. I, 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 I focus. They, they don't have to brush teeth. I, I, they, I, they keep growing they have to actually wear them that doesn't no i throw them on the ground you disgust me and walk oh, oh i fell on my own bunny poop so i kind of that's gross <laughs> now i need to go take a bath uh, uh, wait before he like goes off like anadosha does ask him like is there any more dangerous creatures in that area that we could get tooth from for a alternative tithe The uh, uh, the rabbit who was is now on the ground, released to each other, runs over to the door and is kind of like cowering by the door, ready to, to run inside and hide from you. He says, there are owl bears in the forest. There are foxes in the forest. I don't know. There are people sometimes. They go camping. Yeah, I guess I'll do. Uh, it's right over the river. And uh, I think for anyone who's been to the Sacred Vale before, I assume you're talking, you, you, I know you've been. There's kind of a river that it connects uh, all the way from like the mountains down to the big lake in the middle of Sacred Vale. And then it cuts all the way back through into the mainland right out toward the ocean. But that river kind of splits the Sacred Vale in half where half of the Sacred Vale, like the dark side is on one side and the more light side of Sacred Vale is on the other side. You're currently on the light side of the Sacred Vale, but again, it's kind of gray here right now. Um, so over the river would mean you're you're entering into, into a, a very, very dark place. Uh, I would say that Anadosha has been to the Sacred Vale before, which qualifies mm -hmm. her to be myth tier. Yeah, I'm so sorry. And Ilsha, you also know this. All, anyone who's been here knows this. Just off the top of my head, I knew that you chunks had been here. I wasn't positive at a brain fart moment. Um, but yeah, the, the bunny folk is pretty much cowering within their little abode at this point. Please, if you could help. Well, we could try, but just try not to not miss another tithing in the future. Uh, nods <laughs> it, like extremely quickly. Okay. No. Screw that. If a tooth fairy shows up again after I kill this one, tell me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the bunny folk is horrified. Uh, yes. And kind of the door is like so close to being closed. And just, you see the tiny, barest glint of their eyes peeking <laughs> into the crack. Uh, they're terrified of everything going on. And probably of you. Uh, Good. All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you just say, like, Anadosha doesn't like 
like the fact that she has to deal with uh, one of the tooth fairies. Oh, and it's just like, oh, I, didn't, I was hoping to avoid this. Like, oh, she, she knows the rules, so she knows why it's best not to piss off my art fate. Yeah, I mean, uh, art fate's probably a little bit, like... Well, a, a greater fate. Uh, yeah, a, a greater fate. You know, this is, uh more than your normal, like, quickling or something, you know? This is a, 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 a power in the same wild. Um, so yeah, I mean, does the group of you just go back to your wagon? Are you leaving the wagon here? Uh, what's the, what's the plan? Uh, I was just uh, like, and I looked at her and said, I was just leaving the wagon here. We don't want the horses to lose their teeth as well. The horses like look at each other like they understood what you said for a moment and then just go back to just stand in there. Arguably, they'd be safer with us then. We should take them as far as we can. Well, if, if you can protect them, go for it. Certainly. I've been practicing riding on top of the wagon. It's provided a very good lookout there. All right. The group yeah. of you get back on top of your wagon and begin the ride. You ride along the edge of the forest for 45 minutes or so. Um, it's getting darker and darker as you go, and eventually you hear in the horizon the burbling waters of the river. There is a simple stone bridge that crosses over, and as you approach it, the horses stop, pawing at the ground, or hoofing at the ground, rather, and kind of shaking their manes uncomfortably, not wishing to cross over onto the darker side of the sacred. And it also probably notice this and just say, yeah, it's a wise decision. It's so just like yeah, a day. It looks like we're going to be footing it from here on. Well, I mean, right. you got got to trust their instincts better than ours. You cross over the bridge, and as you do, the crisp air, I think crisp is the right word, Zuzip, you especially, from your uh, position on top of the wagon, can feel it. There's a crisp, refreshing coolness of the breeze. It becomes almost bitter with just a single step over that keystone of the bridge. And the kind of dark cloudiness, uh, that would be uh, maybe fortuitous of a coming rainstorm, a shower, uh, a pleasant thing for Florin, feels almost like an oppressive dead day in the bleakest part of winter. And so the four of you cross over the bridge. It doesn't take all that many steps before you see something out of the ordinary. First, it is darker on this side of the bridge, and it continues to get darker and darker. And after about five minutes of walking along the forest edge, looking for a sign of where this creature, this fey beings, uh, fey being may have gone to, you see something in the distance. Again, it's very dark at this point. Uh, only those of you with dark vision, which I believe is sword, just sword, right? Uh, yeah. And Dosha has devil's sight. Ah, and Dosha, you also would see this. Um, you see a uh, large creature. Uh, it is sitting on the ground near a tree, and it's right by this um, a path, actually, into the now very overgrown thicket of the Sacred Veil. Vale. Um, but yeah, it looks like just a very large bear, uh, it looks. It has a kind of like almost feathered mantle uh, to its, its neck and, and front legs. Um, but it's kind of facing away from you. It seems like it's holding something in its hands uh, or in its paws. Uh, and yeah, it's a large creature. Um, looks kind of like an owl bear, but like it, it's sitting on its rear, just sitting up, looking at something away from you. Uh, it's right by the entrance. 
Hmm. Uh, could we try to identify this creature just from this angle, or? I mean, yeah, it's an owl bear. Like, it looks like an owl bear. Okay. You're familiar with the, this creature enough. So, uh, I guess Adol should like carefully like move around, see what is holding. Are you trying to do this stealthily? And do you alert you Chonkus and Zuzip, who I believe neither of you can see this creature currently, because neither of you have dark vision, right? Correct. I do uh, not have dark vision. Yeah, uh, and those are like, though. yeah, and those are like, like, let's, like, kind of do like some sort of a hand gesture to let Sword know that she's going to be uh, getting a little bit closer to see what it's holding. Yeah, and even for you two, Sword and uh, and Adulsha, and Adulsha, your sight seems to be lasting the most, but even with your dark vision and your devil's sight, it seems like the, the darkness is almost closing in like a claustrophobia. Mm. Like, yeah. you know that you should be able to see through magical darkness um, and adultion, but there's something preternatural about this uh, very malign area that's even oppressing that to a degree. Not fully, of course. But... Well, I mean, she's still going to try to see what it's holding. Sure. Uh, Go ahead and uh, roll me a stealth check as you sneak up. Alrighty. Okay. Not Let's the best, but. See if you are noticed by this creep. Oh, you actually are. As you sneak up toward this creature, um, I think what ends up happening at Adolsha is there's like a clicking sound, like a clack as you as you. Um, kick something muddled in the grass that you didn't expect. The creature turns to see you uh, at the at the sound as you kind of look down, and I think you see on the ground what looks like a yellow triangle of sorts, and there's little bits of of blood around one bit of it. And you're confused at first until you look up and see the beakless owl bear before you. It lets out a deep <laughs> kind of groan and howl and begins uh, to charge toward you. Uh, uh, give me a moment. Uh, sorry, but uh, someone just knocked at my door. Be right back. Not a problem. Everyone else, can we roll for initiative? As you hear this horrible squeal of the owl bear. I'm guessing no one's surprised because you saw this creature. Um, but it also is not surprised. All right, and let me roll for that owl bear. Poor toothless owl bear. Wow, this was a one hell of a roll. All right. Uh, we'll get back. Oh, awesome. Uh, can you roll for initiative before me and Adolsha? Uh, one moment. Uh, and in the meantime, Zuzip, what would you like to do as you hear this this horrible pain squeal echo out through the darkness before you? And you probably hear an Adolsha exclaim like, ah! And Adolsha, by the way, it's holding on to a beehive that it appears to be licking the honey out of through its beakless maw. Oh, okay. Um... I'll need, I need a little bit of light, and as uh, Uchunkus does as well, and uh, having adventured with Uchunkus before as well, uh, or I'm sorry, Uchunkus, uh, uh, I, he's going to need some light as well, so I think I'm going to use my flower power, which is druid craft, in order to make some light, like a small little fire, so that we have some light and uh, and our, our, uh, our cleric can maybe attend to this uh, dental patient. Absolutely. And this is coming from a, a cantrip, correct? Correct. This is a cantrip. Okay. The light flares up from a small... Uh, is it like almost an ethereal plant fire? Is it like a glow that almost uh, glows within one of your, your petals? What, what does this look like? Yeah, if it... Uh, I mean, normally it's just, uh, you know, Druidcraft allows for a little fire, but if you're willing to, uh, to entertain some cosmetics here, then I can make... Oh, uh, yes. Maybe I can sort of like snap one of my little uh, pink strands of uh, Snapdragon, uh, quote unquote, hair, uh, and uh, it'll kind of snap like a. Uh, gl oh, I love it! So uh, I love that. So it's this bright glow, almost like that of a campfire, uh, glowing from from Zuzip's hair, um, or hair. 
Zuzit. I, I guess it looked like Grove of the Burn Willows a little bit, if you're familiar with that magic card. I am. That is a very cool image. Uh, I love it. So, Zuzit, you have this this little light, and usually, what kind of light does that give? Pink. You know, is it like a 20, 40, something like that? Like it's Oh, uh, uh, I think it's... Uh, let me check the, we'll say the it's spell. Like akin to a torch. We'll say it's 20. Feet. Yeah, I, I think it's more akin to a torch, something along those lines. Or I could start a fire, but I'm not, I don't, it doesn't burn in the forest. I'm not going to burn it down. So I'll treat myself as a torch then. And, yeah, uh, sure. and so if I need to move up closer, then I will move. Cl- yeah, well, you, you do that and you can see the, the owl bear. It's just at that, um, kind of 40 foot range. Uh, and I think with the light, Anadolsha and, uh, Sword, you're realizing just how much your dark vision has receded. Um, and I think you can tell right off the bat, Zuzit, there's light from that from that magic, but the light is very quickly fading. Like, oh. it probably won't last more than maybe a round or, or two. Okay, like the well, the, uh, that's my action yeah. and my move. I don't have a bonus action, uh, but okay. we did get some information and there's some light, so there you go. Absolutely. All right, the owl bear uh, is going to charge forward uh, at you, Anadosha, and it will try and bite you. Uh, what's your armor class? My armor class is. Uh, let me double check this. Yeah, it is thirteen. Okay. All right, so it goes to bite you, and it. It gums you for zero bludgeoning damage. Uh, you can see where it normally would have been this horrible owl bear piercing beak, uh, but it just kind of gums against you. Uh, and then it lets out a horrible shriek, uh, shrieking call, almost like a, a deep, deeper owl, deeper toned owl, and spl- uh, slashes with his claws, which do not seem to have fallen out. Uh, oh, an 18 hit for 17 slashing damage. That would hit, and Anadol should use uh, Misty Escape to get right behind it. Excellent. You disappear into a cloud of mist and appear invisibly behind the Toothless Owl Bear. You chonk us. What would you like to do? Because of its light, you can see this pretty clear. All right. I'll use Guiding Bolt on the Owl Bear. All right. Uh, oh, you hit him. Uh, what level were you casting at? Go oh, first. Yeah, hit him no problem. No, he uh, provides light. That's true, actually. Uh, glowing with, uh, is it like a, an almost like misty light? Like almost a, a, a light through the clouds kind of look? Or is it just he glows brightly with light? No, it's like a mist, misty sort of giving off light mist. I love it. So it's this light glow kind of effuses from the uh, horrible owl bear. Uh, and yeah, it is, uh, it is marked. It's taken 13 points of uh, damage. Um, all right. It, uh, is definitely hurt, but it's not quite blood. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do, you chunks? Stand down, bear. Ah, okay. To so stand your ground there next to your ally, Sword. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of Sword, it's your turn. What would you like to do, Sword? I'll use my, uh, Bonus action. First, I'll pull out my uh, hornet's nest and use my bonus action to create the honey trees. Oh! And can I use to placate the owlbear with uh, by using a uh, animal handle? Yeah, absolutely. I'll give you advantage because you've got the honey treats too. So are you, you, so sort of, you kind of approach this, this creature uh, and you take out your hornet's nest, which is like a large mace-like uh, magical item uh, buzzing with bees. Um, but you kind of reach in and take a few of those little uh, honeycomb morsels from it. And I think, you know, the mace is raised almost defensively, not really threateningly. Um, and combined with the, the show of force that um, Yachankis just showed, uh, it is definitely well on its way to being placated. Uh, that's going to be one success toward. Uh, it's probably more, it's probably more hungry than 
It certainly is hungry. You could see it was, as you're getting up to it, it was at the, like, scraping the very last bits out of that honey, that hive of honey. Um, so you have one success toward placating this creature. Um, well on your way. Is there anything else that you would like to do? Uh, well, that was my action and bonus, so... Sure. All right. Uh, Anna Dolce, what would you like to do? Uh, 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 just beforehand, like, could have Anadosha picked up the uh, triangle on the ground. That was, that was probably its beak. <laughs> yes, you could have. All right, in that case, uh, definitely its beak. All right, so uh, as soon as we get back, uh, like, when the uh, Anadosha will, uh, like, kind of move. Well, it's uh, kind of feeding on the honey trees. Anadosha will probably move to the front, put the beak onto its face, and use mending. Mending takes a minute to cast, is the problem. It's not an instant deal. Uh, she, she's willing to take that risk. Well, okay, if you start... I mean, the creature is a wild animal. It's not going to just sit there for a minute. I think you know that, Anadosha. But if you'd like, you could try and, I don't know, persuade the creature that you mean it to help it. That's something you could try and do. I mean, uh, it's already used animal handling, but you could try and use a different skill through mending. Uh, actually, uh, I mean, she don't know much about owlbears, but I guess she could actually, uh, it won't be less, it'll be less of a, uh, it'll be less of a skill and more just showing a item that might placate it a bit. She's just gonna, like, pull out the owlbear plushie and, like, kind of, like, like, you know, hover uh, uh, in front of his face while she's also trying to mend it. Okay, yeah, roll me, roll me a persuasion check, I think is the skill we're gonna use for this. All right. Um, because uh, animal handling's already been been used twice so to try and placate this creature. Uh, and actually, along that line, you, try, you rolled your guiding bolt. Do you want that to be a damaging guiding bolt, or would you prefer that to have been like an intimidation via guiding bolt? I'll stick with damage. Stick with the damage. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, actually, mm. instead, wait. Instead of persuasion, can you use performance instead? Like make it like like kind of like making owlbear sounds plushy. Yeah, okay. I can, I can, uh, jive with that. Yeah, all right, you're well on your way now. Two, uh, I'll tell you out of the necessary three, uh, to placate this very distressed owl bear. It has the, it's kind of almost getting overwhelmed with the amount of different things. You have a little owl bear doll, and it's just kind of confused because it makes little owl bear noises. And you have the, uh, the honey treats all around, and it's just, in pain and confused at this point. Still probably dangerous, but Zuzip, it's your move. Uh, you can feel the light fading. You think at the end of this round, or at the end of your turn right here, the light from your uh, your feature will probably have faded. However, the guiding bolt light is nice. It illuminates the area around the owlbear, it illuminates the owlbear quite well. All right. Uh, so it, it looks like uh... We have Anna Dolsha is holding the beak to the owlbear, wants to help. Um, mm -hmm. Mending's not going to work, so... Um... It might work if you take some time, but you need to kind of get the owlbear calm before that. Yeah. Well... Your eyes are doing a good job on it, Frank. Your is also doing a good job killing the owlbear, so... Well, yeah. Either's, a, either's an option. Um... What I will do is I will aid Anna Dolsha in trying to, if you'll allow an aid. Otherwise, if you, if this is like a skill check and you need me to roll something, I can. So you can either roll a skill check and kind of describe how you're helping to placate the owlbear, or you can give someone else an advantage on their skill check to try and placate the owlbear. Well, if we already have light, Either's how about I do this? Uh, it really, you know, it wanted that honey. It, you know, it's it's in distress. Uh, I want to help out this uh, this fellow creature, so uh, I will use my druid craft in order to um, uh, maybe enhance the honey in uh, in some way. Uh, it, it's not necessarily reflavoring, but I guess creating a, a scent, something can... something soothing for the owl bear because it's in distress right now. Gotcha. Uh, all right, can you roll me? I guess that's probably a spellcasting ability check. That makes the most sense to me. You're using a, a, a magical spell to try and soothe this creature. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, absolutely. 
you maybe make the smell of fresh flowers and um, uh, kind of the first spring rain. And as you kind of do so, the creature (laughs) kind of relaxes a little bit, uh, returns to a a calmer state and um, is still frightened and afraid, um, but is definitely no longer a a threat to you all. Uh, Kind of nervous about you all, but not not attacking. you're talking, do you want to attack the owlbear? Would well, you like to attack it? Okay. I just wanted to, I, I mean, it was in your right if you wanted to. Uh, yeah, the combat appears to have uh, receded here. What would uh, you all like to do? Uh, uh, I should okay. tell you, uh, there, there's, a, there's a forest, uh, and there's a path leading into the forest. The forest otherwise is a very dense thicket. You can see that it's been kind of overgrown and twisted by the malign influences of this place. Uh, and also just continue to make sure the mending goes through properly and then like, it'll, uh, stroke the, uh, Albert to, uh, to those that it's okay now. All right. And it also, this is a little beyond the, the scope of mending. Roll me a spellcasting ability check and we'll see how we go. Uh, I think this is a pretty hard check. But if you can beat a DC of 19, I'll say that you somehow manage, you, okay, you somehow manage to mend this beak back onto the owl bear um, over the course of the next minute or so. Uh, and uh, as you do so, the owl bear kind of is, is a little surprised. Like it was eating the honey treats and it smears a honey treat over its beak and blinks a couple of times. Like it hasn't realized what you were doing and then it licks the honey treat off and it clacks its beak and kind of seems like excited. Uh, and yeah, you, uh, you have, you have rec- boom, restored the beak of this owl there. Um, what do you all want to do from here? Can any of you speak with this creature in order to determine what happened? Uh, uh, I don't think it takes a lot of guessing to determine what happened. Unfortunately, Anadosha does not have that one feature. Hmm. Oh, wait, wait. Actually, let me read something real quick. In case you're wondering, the oh, Owlbear does wait, not wait, have wait. a wait. Oh, actually, she can get something out of it. Give me a second. <laughs> okay. Conveyor belts. Oh, my God. So, Anadosha... You start doing this weird interpretive dance, and what what would you like to ask? You can convey simple ideas with any yeah. creature you do not share language with. Like, like I'll just ask, pretty much ask, like, uh, like, what did that to you? Um. Yeah, I mean, it does its best to like respond. Um. There is a, an old woman who lives in the forest. Uh, She's in a hut down the path. She hasn't left in a long while, but but the other day, or I guess today, uh, this morning she came, but she came through uh, riding atop a flying tooth. All right, so yeah, and also like, uh, like kind of like you know, just show, uh, like, a simple gesture of thanks, Dean, that everyone else know. The owlbear continues to eat the honey, uh, honey treats. Uh, Sword, you know, it had trouble with the honey treats at first. It's still having trouble with the honey treats. It's smearing them all over itself and then just licking them off, which is adorable, but uh, it's not very good at eating them. Well, he's complacent, so I guess that's all that matters. It's a pretty happy-looking owl. All right. So, what do you uh, what do you all want to do from here? Do you want to head down the path into the forest in pursuit of this uh, this old woman, apparently? Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Okay. As you get to the edge of the forest, again, it is very dark. What are you doing to ha- kind of have have light? Oh, Zip, you can see that the, your, your cantrips aren't really very functional here. I mean, the cantrip magic just isn't enough to penetrate the 
uh, oppressive darkness of this place. Sword, even your dark vision has almost completely rescinded. You can see like your hands, but that's about it. Uh, uh, and Dolce, and uh, even, you can see like, 15 to 20 feet. And the thing is too, I have the flaming gloves and they have like, like continuous flame on, but that's saying even they're not. Yeah, I didn't I mean, even know they I think you guys could see the flaming gloves like embers in the pitch of night, right? It's visible, but it's not making anything else visible. Not effectively, at least. Uh, and Anadosha, like, how's her devil sight still holding up? You got like 15 feet of sight. Oh, yeah, so Anadosha will actually try to help everyone out, out like, if they're complaining about the darkness and whatnot. She will spend... Okay. Actually, how long does this last, I wonder? Uh... Okay, never mind. It's in my next turn. Never mind. I mean, you could just travel through in the dark. That's perfectly fine. Like, I think you have... With Anna Dolsha leading the way, you have enough vision to be able to do that. It's just potentially dangerous. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I was uh, thinking about like casting something with. Actually, I do can cast something with flight, but. Uh... Yeah, alright, so yeah, I'll actually do this. Uh, Anadosha uh, will actually let everyone know to like stay back a good bit from. Uh... Uh, let me find it. Uh, how far? Yeah, uh, uh, actually, she'll just say like to just stay where they are and she'll make a spell outside of the path, but. We'll... Probably enough to actually light the way here, so she is a. What are you thinking? Wall of light. Yeah, it's a very, very long path through the woods. Like it's clearly got a, a winding, twisting path through the, this very yeah. overgrown thicket. While a yeah. light doesn't move, you're gonna have a really. It's just not I, gonna do what you want to do. Well, well, I'm aware. I mean, uh, all I'm gonna do with wall of light is like have it outside a bit, out, outside the range a bit, uh, at least okay. enough uh, enough for it to actually kind of like. Uh, illuminate the path that we actually can see for the moment. Sure. Uh, to That's like a, uh, up towards like the whole 120 feet outwards and all that. So. And what level is the wall of fight? Uh, wall of light. Uh, it is level five. All right. So the wall of light shines out, giving you quite a bit of vision. You can see the dense, overgrown thicket. It still is dark and unpleasant. Um, the path is not very wide. You can only really travel, maybe. Want a pace? What's uh, what's your marching order? Uh, well, since Andosha was the one that can actually see the most, she'll be in the front. Okay. I guess I'll be in behind her. Okay. I suppose I'm next. All right, and Zizip will take up the the rear. You begin yep. to travel through this uh, dark and twisted forest. It doesn't take you very long before the light of the wall of light begins to fade into obscurity behind you. Um, it definitely punches through the darkness quite a bit, especially the fifth level spell, but it does seem to fall away um, after just about a hundred feet. However, after that hundred feet or so, it illuminates just barely uh, a terrible thing before you. Uh, it appears there's a large blockage in front of you that's covering the path. It appears to be a huge heap of teeth that's just totally blocking the passage forward. Um, looking about you to the sides, I mean, it's grass, I mean, it's leaves and overgrowth and brambles and trees um, that are just incredibly dense. I think we're here. <laughs> uh, actually, yeah, uh, I think Anadosha will uh, look at over, like, look over teeth, see if there's anything that might, like, uh, like, Oh, wait, no, that's only in Legend to your game. Never mind. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, what do, you, what do you all want to do? I mean, there's a, a huge heap of teeth. Uh, wait, actually, wait. Would Ando should know, like, what, uh, how the Tooth Fairy gathers teeth and, like, what they usually do with them? Uh, when they're placed under pillows, they can spirit them away uh, in exchange for a coin. Um, when... Uh, yeah, outside of that, oh, uh, from what the bunny folk were saying, uh, she was grabbing them and tearing their teeth out. 
Yeah, and those just like unsure at this moment, like why they would just gather teeth in the middle of here. So she yeah, just I'm, I'm unclear. It's uh, unclear to her. <laughs> what kind of teeth are they? Uh, variety. Uh, it looks like it's you know there's molars and incisors. There are teeth from animals and humanoids. It's just a big heap of teeth. There's a couple like really big teeth. Hmm. Yeah, All and right. it's just like in the middle of the path. Like it's just been dumped here, probably intentionally to block the path. Okay, hmm. up and over, around, or through. Well, I'm not sure how they will react to being, like, having teeth trotted on, so... I have to find a way to just go over it without touching the teeth? That's gonna be really hard, but maybe. Uh, hmm. and, and is just gonna use the last spell slot and just cast fly? Like, uh, actually, uh, is there, uh... Trust like can can sword fly? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sword can't fly. That's true, actually. All right. So in that case, uh, and those will just uh, cast it on everyone else who can't fly. All right. So you can see you know, there is a little bit of a, a gap, obviously, before the the branches and everything of the the tree cover um, become too thick above. But there's definitely going to be some sort of a, a, a squeezing or balancing act of of kind of getting through without if you don't want to touch the teeth or get caught up in the the branches. Um, does that sound all right to you guys? I just want to let you know, like that would be probably an acrobatics check to get past this. All right. Oh, uh, acrobatics. Yeah, and I, just, I just want to let you know what I what that would probably be. I guess you could use athletics too, probably if you wanted to bully your way to the branches above. Oh, wait, actually, oh, wait, uh, uh, out of the party, who's the most, who is the most acrobatic? Definitely not me. Yeah, not me. Uh, all right, uh. uh I've, I've been known to swing on some ropes every now and again. Uh, I guess, uh, yeah, and also just, you know, uh, she can on multiple creatures. Mm -hmm. Uh... <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, well just... I'm just saying, you could just pull all the teeth out of the way. It just takes some time and probably uh, not be a pleasant experience. Uh, and it no, also, uh, would you like me to blow the teeth out of the way for you? I don't want to be that because, uh, keep in mind, this is a tooth fair. I mean, they could be rather difficult. So, uh, wait, it, actually, you could do something for me. And also, actually... Well, you said that the uh, the path was pretty much like a one like one width for us. Yeah, but... very tight. All right, so Ando should pull out the portable hole and lay it in front of the path of teeth. Look, to do this. you think you can push all those teeth into this hole? I will do my best to do so. Yeah, I mean, do you want to do you want to just try and shovel all the teeth into the portable hole? <laughs> Uh, I could try athletics, or I do have the, uh... I also have that gust spell you had, or whatever. I do have gust. I also have mold earth, as uh, I can kind of, like, churn the earth beneath the, uh, beneath the teeth to kind of conveyor belt them in, uh, down into the... That yeah, I, I'm, I'm down with that. Absolutely. Um, Yushanka's sword, are you two doing anything, or are you just observing this weird tooth thing? I don't know where I am. <laughs> yeah, I think you, you have enough light that you can see the huge heap of teeth and you can see people. It's fading from the uh, wall of light, but it's still visible for you currently. Mm -hmm. I'm helping in whatever way I can. I'm taking the help action if necessary. Yeah, no problem. This might help out a little bit. Uh, I'll okay. use a uh, parts on my flaming gloves and uh, try to en enhance the brightness of the flame. Oh, okay, so just give a little bit more light. Excellent. Hey, you probably won't do a whole lot, but I mean... Yeah. I getcha. Sword, uh, can you roll me a spellcasting ability check? Uh, Zizip, can you roll me a spellcasting ability check? And Anna Dulcia, I guess you just, you're standing there. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I, make sure, I just threw out the portable hole with them, pushing all the teeth in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and actually, Zuzik, you have an advantage on yours. Both of you have an advantage from 
Uh, your chunks. Okay. All right. So the light from the you kind of put the gloves together and you rub them together and they burn a little brighter. There's a little bit more light in the area. Zuzit, you churn the earth and the teeth begin to fall into the portable hole. Going to be a nasty portable hole there. Um, and enough of the teeth fall in and are clear that you can easily traverse further into the uh, into the forest. However, I would like all of you to roll me a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw, right? Ah, oh, no. that's a bad one. Yeah, it is. Across the board. Uh, all right, you chunkus. And a dulcia and sword. Each of you find that one of the rarest magic items on your person appears to have been, well, spirited away, lost. Uh, all of your Bartholomew's choices appear to be missing. I never had one. As you, <laughs> oh, and a dulcia, I'm sorry, for you, it's the rod of the pact keeper that appears to be I don't have that one either. I tried that away. Oh. What do you have? Uh, quite a bit. I have the let's see conveyor belt, sticky puppy, blink frog, owlbear plushy, basket plushy, mystery key, portable hole, Windsor's rings. Uh, bring in the wow, you really don't have one really good magic item, do you? Uh, well, uh, let's see, robe of scintillating colors. That's yep. Yeah, that that's the one. And there's also the ring of Midas as well. We'll say the robe. Well, actually, no, the, the ring makes more sense. It's small. But yeah, uh, it seems that your things have disappeared and as you've like, been clearing this uh, the teeth. Yeah, and like you know that it wasn't just misplaced. Something, something has taken these. Yeah, I mean, and she usually wears that ring, so yeah, she knows it's gone. Like, yeah. Oh, dang! I really want to use that thing. I'm gonna uh, kill this tooth fairy. Before I do. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it took the helmet off your head. Yeah, yeah. who knows? Now, does Zuzip, uh, apparently Zuzip's not affected by this, but does no. she, does, does she see like that the helmet is actually gone or are people murmuring about rings and helmets and I'm just no, sitting there gone. like, you, you're wearing them, you, what's going on? No, they, they've been, they seem to have been taken. Okay. Uh, All right. And yeah, those size falls up the portable hole. And this is, let's go on. I'm pretty sure we know where they went. All right. You continue to head forward through the, uh, through the, the now very, very dark path. Do you do anything else as the light completely fades or? Uh, I mean, and yeah, those could offer some light, but it only lasts, uh, like, probably six seconds, so that's not really effective. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she'll probably continue forward, at least enough to till they see the hut. Yeah, does anyone have any any ideas for light? Or sort of just yeah, me with your gloves? I, I think it's just me with Domitarty and my gods. All right. Uh, uh, if, I, if there's a branch available, can I just try a natural fire and see if a natural light source you can try and light a torch. Yeah, yeah. Or make a torch. Yeah, I and think I, you're I have one of those too. <laughs> yeah, you you light the torch, and I'd like you to roll me one d four, as you do. Ooh, ah, you light the torch, and it gives off light, and you can see that light is fading and and reducing. And in uh, the better part of 30 seconds, it, it dims down to just an ember. But it did last some time, just about half a minute, or 1d4 plus one rounds. So well, it's good to know. We should continue to press on and kind of flare up every time that we need. All right. You press on through the dark forest. And after a few uh, more minutes of walking, you begin to feel the texture of the ground changing. What was once dirt and bramble and root 
retain, retains those properties, but appears to be changed and altered in seemingly minor ways at first. A small extra stone or rock, but after a few more steps, you feel a crunching grittiness, almost like gravel. Looking down, lighting a fresh torch, you see teeth scattered all about the ground. You see up ahead, but a few feet more, the path expands and spreads into something of a large clearing. In the center, there is an old, crooked hut. You take no. a few... Mm-hmm. Go ahead, sorry. No, 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 please. You have not entered the clearing yet, so... I mean, I, you can just describe it a little bit more before she says something. Yeah, I mean, it's just a, a fairly wide clearing. Your guess is it's at least 40 feet across, but it's hard to say because the torchlight from your kind of vantage just outside of the clearing, nothing seems to be speaking to you or responding to you yet. Yeah, yeah. And Osha just like looks at the hut and says, you know, I expected something a little bit more elegant from... Uh, well, never mind. Uh... uh forget that because this thing's been just pulling teeth out of people, so I don't think it should have the elegance of such. Probably went mad from doing it every, all the time. They don't do, they usually don't do it like that the whole time, so that's why I'm kind of worried about this one, so. Mm. Actually, I think Anna Dolcia, your worst fears are kind of assuaged seeing this. This looks like a hag's hut. So, not as great of a fay as maybe you thought, but I don't know. You're not sure. This is strange behavior for a hag, even. But hags are weird. Mm. And Osha will just, uh, like, before entering any further, she would uh, cast Trickster's Escape on herself. Okay. What's that do? Uh, uh, oh, freedom uh, of movement. Oh, damn. Yeah. Cool, cool. Does anyone else want to uh, buff up or do anything before entering into this next area? Uh, I will hand out some of these uh, delicious uh, <laughs> rolls to people to give them a max of yeah, uh, a, a max more five each. All right. Uh, what, temporary or just recovered? It, it's the aid spell just in this refilling picnic basket. So you get a fun little treat to eat and it'll increase your maximum hit points by. Oh, okay. Did I do that? I think I'll uh, cast bless. Yeah, I, I mean that's a, a good thing to do. Uh, uh, at first level or at second level? If you want to get yourself second level, level to get all get everybody. Gotcha. I'm gonna cast death ward. <laughs> I mean, I assume on yourself. Yep. I'm also going to cast cast holy weapon. Oh. What are you gonna target with your holy? I guess your teeth, isn't it? It is my teeth. Yeah, all right, fair enough. Your teeth glow with divine radiance, uh, which actually seems to do a pretty good job of retaining the fifth level spell, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does a really good job at retaining its its light uh, in this most tenebrous of places. Um, normally, what, it's 2040 light from the holy weapon? Uh, no, it's 3060. Oh, hot damn. Wow. So you have 30 feet of, of light, 15 of which is dim. Uh, the last 15 of which is dim. It is definitely weakened by this area, but it doesn't seem to be decaying like the natural torchlight. Uh, and yeah, you see out in this clearing teeth. And there are, um, I think now with this brighter light shining out, you see what look like scarecrows uh, that have been built throughout the area. Um, and they're like normal scarecrows, except they have real teeth stuck into them. And, uh, yeah, there's maybe six or seven of them scattered about. Uh, yeah, and don't she wants to see if she knows any magics that would, uh, where the use of body parts or anything would uh, cause, like, inanimate objects to come to life? There is whack magic that can do that. You know, there's like normal magic, like animate objects that can do it. Those are normal spells. And then there are darker, more malign magics that can do that as well. Yeah, and I just like think about this as 
Yeah, this is definitely not a normal tooth fairy if it is one. Yeah. All right. So, what do you who, do? You guys want to enter, or do you want to just stand around outside? And if so, who's uh, going in? What you doing? I will walk up and uh, is, is is the door solid, or is there a window I can look into, or is there even right is there up. enough light? Do in I need to theory. provide? It? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I assume if you are you traveling as a party, everyone heading in together. Yeah. For the most part. All right. Is that, yeah. So, you take your first steps forward. The ground gritty with dirt and crunching like gravel underfoot. You take a few steps and you can almost swear that the little scarecrows scattered around are following you with their lifeless, toothy gazes. You approach the hut, the centerpiece to this clearing. You can see that the pillars and the posts that make up this structure appear to be made of teeth stacked and stacked upon one another, cemented together. The door is a simple wooden door. And as you crack it open and look within, you see nothing, but hear a voice echoing from above. Well, I was wondering when you would come to see one. <laughs> you chunk, as you look upwards, actually you all look upwards, you see an ancient hag, withered skin pulled taut in places and sagging in others. A large, toothy maw smiling down upon you. I was wondering when I'd get some of yours. I knew it would try you. I'm gonna kill I... you. <laughs> Not if I kill you first. I'd like all of you to roll for initiative. <laughs> uh, you're talking if you can roll with advantage. Hot diggity. Hot damn. All right. Sword Co here, however, is the first to go. Sword, what would you like to do? Uh, you see, oh, sorry. The hag is up in the air, flying on top of a giant, what looks like mole. Looks like it came out of a, the mouth of a giant, actually. Oh, let's see about doing, uh, let's do something about that mole. It looks like it has a cavity. <laughs> okay. Uh, no! actually, well, actually, you can, uh, can you fly right now, Sword? Did you activate that? You say you did, but... Yeah, I mean, that's fine. You knew you were going into a... Okay. We're going in yeah, you, you release your angelic wings and fly into the air, swinging at the tooth with a crack of your square hammer. Unfortunately, you do not connect. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do? Um, I will uh, summon a spiritual weapon. Okay, okay. And uh, have it... Uh, in the form of a dra and I have it to, the, to have it attack the mole. Okay. Uh, is twelve connect. Uh, yes, it does actually. Bring some more. All right, eighteen. Nice, nice. Uh, you put a huge crack in this flying molar, which shakes under her, her weight. You can see that atop her uh, kind of tattered um, gray-blue uh, dress, um, there are like, it looks like strings with all sorts of teeth hanging off of them at all different places. Um, and actually, it's almost laced with teeth at the bottom. But yeah, um, 
<laughs> they shake and rattle as uh, she gets shaken around pretty bad. Not quite destroying the flying molar, but damaging it pretty bad. Another hit like that would probably crack it in half. Uh, anything else you'd like to do, Sora? Uh, nope, that's it. All right. Next in the initiative is Zuzi. Can you remind me how the wall of light interacted with this weird darkness? The wall of light cut right through it. Okay. It just, you kind of, where you cast it at the beginning is why it kind of faded over time because you were walking away from it. Okay, well, I'm, I will cast oh. wall of light as well. Where would you like that to be? Like, uh, is... it, like on her hut or just out in the middle area? Do you want to try and hit some of those scarecrows with it? Well, I are the scarecrows moving in on us? Like, have they animated? They haven't or... moved. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, if I could, if I could run the wall through her to affect, uh, to, to try and blind her. Oh, it can go vertical. Oh, cause light. It can be free floating, of course. Yeah, absolutely. You strike through the wall of light. Um, what does she have to do? Constitution saving throw. Yep. Alrighty. The bop. Uh, oh. One moment. Uh, I'm I I used heightened oh. spell, so it's a force disadvantage. Ah, so you've well, in her case, unfortunately, you've cut through her magic resistance. Um, but oh wait, no wait, she does not have magic resistance. I apologize. Um, she's legendary resistance, but she's not gonna use that here. I. Yeah, no, she will. This blinds, like, indefinitely, right? It, uh, no, she gets like, saves. She gets saves, oh yeah. I think I think she'd still use, use her legendary resistance. That's fine. Um, so, 14, I assume, failed, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think she still takes, like, half damage from it. Just one the... second. Tooth get damaged by it? Oh, it, it does. The tooth fails. It does half damage, yeah. 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 So this gonna is going to be uh, all right. So forty-eight. Half. All right. Um, the tooth. This is radiant damage. Yes, and if she ends future turns in the wall, she'll take more damage. Yep. Uh, the tooth, although it's resistant to the radiant damage. Uh, it does not matter. It shatters under the force of your magic, uh, and she falls onto the roof of her hut. I just with a ah! uh, with a collapse. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to do, Zuzi? Uh, that'll be all. All right. She will use one of her legendary actions to pull teeth. Uh, I would like all of you to uh, roll me a dexterity saving throw. Uh, question. I'm sorry, it's not a dexterity save. Yeah, it's a constitution saving throw. I'm sorry, uh, you can re-roll those. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead, Charlie. My uh, teeth are magical right now. Does that affect this? I'll give you advantage. I also may or may not have teeth. Actually, uh, yeah, it's 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 a psychic thing. It's a psychic. Okay. Effect. Um, don't forget, y'all have blast. It's not actually gonna tear out all your teeth. Oh yeah, we do uh, have blast. Okay, uh, but I don't think that would... cute named ability. Oh my god. Uh oh, dang. Oh well. Uh, what? How much does a blast give? Uh, that you gave us. D four. I mean, one D four. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to. Well, let me just tell you, her DC is 14. It's not super high. Not. Uh, it, so, it's still not so I'm oh, going to no. say. Okay. So it'll be 17 damage on a failure or no damage on a success. Uh, I'll take you feel it. this piercing, rattling pain in your skull. Or okay, I guess do zipping uh, your buds. I'll take the damage in the. Uh, uh, I think Missy stepped right to her face. But she can't okay, see Okay, right on top of the hut. Uh, wait. Oh, never mind. I can't use it. Never mind. 
I'm sorry, did you say half damage on a save? No, it's no damage on a save. No damage, okay. Never mind, okay. So uh, I don't um, have four fourteen. It's a ten. All right. So the Tooth Fairy will now take their turn, uh, and they are on the hunt next to you. And oh, and also you're invisible, right? Uh, no, I, I can uh, Apparently, I cannot use it because I haven't taken a short rest. All right, she is on the house then. She will leap down from the roof, uh, where I think that's where you are, Yuchankis and Susan, right? Yep. And she is going to use her crushing jaw attack at you, Susan, to try and bite you. And bat! Oh my god. Ooh. A 21 to hit. Eh, I'll let you squeak that one in. Uh, it'll be 47 points of piercing damage as her maw opens in a horrific manner. Uh, and you can see within, she has kind of rows and rows of teeth, uh, like that of, of a shark almost. And there are different types of teeth. Some are, are, uh, kind of sharpened inside. There's other flat molars. It's almost like she's stolen the teeth from many, many creatures. Uh, so that's a lot of damage. Uh, it's only the first 47, thankfully but you are then grappled by her teeth. Okay, uh, my wall goes down? Yes, I believe so, that was a lot of... Yep, that was an outrageous amount of damage. And she rolled really well on it too. Yeah, the bus is down too. As is uh, the holy weapon. Oh my God. She's had a brutal first round. Um, that's all she does, and now it is your turn, you chonkus. Do I see our, our items on her anywhere? Um, looking around? I think in the light, because you, you thought to look for, look for them. I think mm -hmm. in the light of the wall of light, yes, you see them pretty clearly. Uh, they are just kind of on the scarecrows. Okay, I bite her. Kind of... Okay. As a bonus action. Sure. Uh, 14 will hit. Four She's spooky, but not... Three. Okay. Four damage. Okay, first blood, we'll take it. Well, I guess not first blood. Uh, shit, how much was the wall of light? I didn't put that on there. Um... And then I'm going to call lightning. All right. Uh, the kind of sky, or I guess the, the roof of this clearing, uh, the ceiling of this clearing begins to cloud and swirl with, uh, with, uh, with clouds and thunder. Oh, and that'll just straight up hit her. Okay. Uh, so roll a dexterity saving throw. Not quite enough. Um... Yeah, she will not use her legendary resistance yet. She's only got one. Ah, all right. Then she can take 40 damage. Well, she didn't know that, but uh, she does now. Uh, she kind of uh, twists and shrieks in agony. From the I light. push her 10 feet. <laughs> Where are you pushing her? Away. Away from Suzip? Uh, yes, I, and Susan, me. That releases you from the bite. I was looking up some grapple mechanics the other day, okay. and I don't think you're pulled with her when she's forcibly moved. So you and are not, you are no longer grappled within her crushing jaws. I go, okay. and then I head over to the scarecrow to get my rock. Okay, yeah, you walk right over and, uh, oh, and she pushed her away, she can't get opportunity. Yep. Yeah, you walk over, you pick it up. Great. It's yours. All Back right. My round. Oh, wait a minute. It is now very dark in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I will say that you you remembered where it was. Uh, and you ran over and grabbed it. With the flash of lightning. Light. Yeah. Oh, the flash of lightning. There we go. Otherwise, that is pitch black in here right now. And it also, it's your move. Yes, uh, uh, seeing that your chunk is using lightning now, and it also gets the idea uh, to uh, use her wizard's ring. And cast Elemental Lightning Babe next to the hag. All right. Elemental Lightning Babe. 
a crack of lightning shoots down from the uh, uh, from the clouds above, and a uh, a form of a very sleek and slender, kind of sassy lizard, uh, but made of lightning, appears uh, and hisses violently or angrily at the uh, at the hack. Yeah. Also, uh, actually, I'm not sure how react to higher levels. So. Oh, don't worry about that for now. Don't right. worry about that one. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. So you've cast elemental babies. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Uh, yes. Uh, and she will levitate. Well, actually, no. Wait, uh, ah. act, wait, wait. I think it's an action. Uh, All right. Uh, so you can yeah, cast levitate yourself at will. So. Yeah, still an action. Yeah, so um, in that case, you can't do anything else. Cool. And it also, the elemental babe attacks. Can you roll me a spell attack roll? Uh, uh, just a regular attack roll? Yes, regular spell attack roll. You can just hit your Eldritch Blast or whatever you want. Okay, uh, spell attack. So, if I remember right, it's basically a charisma spell check. So. Mm-hmm. Ooh, oh, hot damn. Oh. The lightning claw of this elemental babe, this, uh, this lightning lizard, slashes through. Uh, her form, uh, and you see like the skeleton just kind of uh, visualized for a moment. It didn't seem to immediately hurt her, but you see that she's almost glowing with this this slight uh, kind of electric glow, uh, and her skeleton is almost like sparkling, sparkingly visible uh, as she is uh, has been hit by the, the spell. All right. Is uh, moving on to the next thing. The ground begins to shake and you see the kind of teeth all about kind of pooling about each other and you only see things fleetingly with the lightning strikes but the the teeth all pool together and they form into a large shape um a large worm like shape which uh crashes down at you anadolsha because you just did that thing zipap the oh the the tooth worm misses you. Uh, the horrible worm of uh, formed of just writhing, twisting teeth uh, crashes down uh, in your location and just scatters back into the uh, into the, the area. Wow! Even, even the critical uh, even the critical uh, fail roll it would still have hit my armor fast. But thankfully... we love crit crit fails. <laughs> yeah, crit fails is good. So go here. It's your move. I guess mass healing word. Nice. Everybody regains 13. Nice. Cool. Anything else? And then uh, I can still see the hag, can I? Uh, it's dark, dude. I don't I don't think you can. Uh, her skeleton is uh, illuminated. Oh, you're right. Oh, that's because, true. Yep, <laughs> You can't, you can't see, see anything, anything else. else. None of your allies, none of anything else, but you can see her. All right, well, let's light her up some more. Okay. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. All right, you run for the square hammer and swing. Go ahead and roll me your damage. Mmm, there we go. That's how we like it. All right. Oh, she ah, kind of grimaces and, and uh, oh my, plus. Plus a bajillion other damage, I forget. Eight. It adds up. 39. Yep, she is badly injured after that. Knocked uh, a few hundred feet out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, literally, if you hit her, teeth go flying off of her because they're all over her, her uh, attire. Um, and yeah, I guess I've been the electrical, the electrified teeth are just like slightly lighting up the ground. Uh, very slightly. Uh, uh, is there anything else you like to do, Sort? Uh, no, because if I try to run away, it'll be provoking up. Okay. Do you think what would you like to do? Uh, that's a big box of text that just says as a bonus action, a 30 foot uh, radius, uh, a lot of other Blossom or Florins pop up. Okay. And I'm choosing my three allies to uh, be immune to the difficult terrain effects 
of all these little like Zuzeps kind of clawing at the feet and going me me me, and yeah. uh, then I would like to uh, I would like to cast. I, I'm keeping my distance because I can cast this spell through my little through my little uh, Zuzep like extensions. I'm gonna cast uh -huh. enlarge reduce on sword. Okay. And uh, as a as a movement in this sort of theater of the mind, I just want to position my thirty foot radius to try and encumber this. Uh, if I see the mon this big monster, I'd like to encumber it as if I can, but uh, try and make sure that my allies uh, get the benefits of this field and my enemies are punished by it. Gotcha. Yeah. So where the the large worm of, made of teeth has appeared, uh, you grow up all these plants to encumber it. Absolutely. Uh, all right, is that the end of your move? That's all three of my parts. Cool, cool. At the end of your turn, uh, they will use their second legendary action and do their frightful chattering. Teeth all throughout chatter frightfully. I need everyone to roll a wisdom saving throw. All right, here we go. Oh, that's better. Okay. Uh, all right, it looks like you have succeeded overwhelmingly. Um, oh, except for Sword. Sword, you are frightened. Um, right. She's going to move away from you, Sword, provoking an attack of opportunity, which you can make, I guess, with disadvantage because you're frightened. Okay. Unfortunately, a miss and she's going to go toward you, Euchankus, and she's going to make a spell attack roll against you uh, as her hands crackle with kind of black uh, and green necrotized magic. Uh, and she is going to attempt to cast the Contagion spell, targeting your teeth. I can't have them, no one can. Uh... So I need you, well, first we gotta make a spell attack roll against you, which that's gonna be a 20 plus seven, a 15, Yuchakis? No. Oh, nice, I was not sure. Uh, she, her hands crackle with this necrotic magic and you, I don't know, duck grab, out of the way? I or? think I just grab her arm and like twist it to the side. Yeah. I don't think so. All right, uh, that was her action. You chunk this is your move. All right. Um... Oh, I look at her and I, like you, you're gonna feel the feeling of decay. Uh, and Punchy Cloud appears, but it's holding a drill. <laughs> okay, not the drill. That is a 16 hit. Uh, yeah. You got a fairly low armor class. Uh, and then I blast it with lightning. Okay. Now, she was hit by the elemental babe, which means this is going to do an extra uh, 4d6 worth of damage because of the critical hit. Okay. And, uh... I'm going to just say she preemptively is going to use her legendary resistance to try and not die. Um, which, yeah, okay. So she's going to do the legendary resistance. How rough does she look? Pretty beat up, actually. She looks pretty bad. Uh, she looks really bad. Hold up. So if she's... I'm going to max it. All right. So what what is that going to be then? 32. Including the 4d6? Yes. Okay. Uh, and then half of 32. No, sorry, did I say 32? Because 32 was yeah. the half. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, all right. 64. Yeah. Oh my God. All right, she is on the precipice, about to break. Barely clutching to life. 
Okay. Oh, wait, no, shit. I hadn't added the punchy cloud. All right, she's dead. <laughs> Chagas, ah. how do you kill this person? I'm sorry, how do you defeat the Tooth Fairy? Well, I think the punchy cloud starts drilling her teeth. Uh, you can uh, see uh, anything. <laughs> as the lightning strikes it. And just, I don't know, probably make punchy clouds drill just, you know. Mm, bore a hole through her head. Mm. Yeah, and just and almost, teeth are just exploding everywhere. <laughs> is Yuchanga's like laughing maniacally as the lightning uh, yeah, cracks of behind him? <laughs> All right, I'd like everyone to roll a wisdom saving throw. Uh, Yuchanga's is very frightening. Uh, well, none of you are afraid of Yuchanga's. You're all like, this is part of the course. Yeah, it's really frightened. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, same. This is the same thing. Uh, every time I go to the yeah, same thing as every day. You talk if you laugh maniacally as this uh, over in over her head hag uh, is vanquished by your punchy cloud drill and crackles of lightning, and as the fiend falls, so too does the darkness of this area, uh, but still overcast in shadow as is the dark side of the sacred veil. Um, the As the fiend falls, a faint stars. hope blossom. A faint hope blossoms. And that's Zuzip blossoming. Uh, yep. Zuzip, uh, your uh, flower florins are, you know, they're doing their thing, but the, the tooth uh, worm just kind of collapses into a heap with the uh, the very dead. Okay. And um, yeah, with the uh, the Tooth Fairy defeated, the the group of you are able to, I guess, return to the bunny folk, and at least yeah, let them know. That, at least let them know that the Tooth Fairy is gone. Or what, what's, happens, your, uh, what's your plan? Real, real... Hey, don't pull the teeth out of the the portable hole. Yeah, <laughs> I got my work about me. <laughs> Sword, you go through the painstaking process of finding the bunny folk's teeth in the big heap of teeth. And Anadolsha, you with your mending help to put them back in. Uh, of course, with uh, you uh, advice, is he's the dentist. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> Dental advice. I, I love it. I've got Fuji 9. <laughs> You've got Fuji 9. Uh, and. Are you, do you do anything in particular to help these bunny folk? Oh, of course I will, though I want to, uh, want to make one uh, experiment while I have the Florin fields up. Uh-huh. Uh, as my little Florin buddies uh, do allow me to concentrate on another spell, uh, I would like to cast Enlarge Reduce on Sword one more time and see if I can make him heal. Oh, God. I don't know how that works, but we're going to say yes. Why? <laughs> It's an experiment. I just want to see if it's possible that I can double stack my enlarge. So sword co here is now. I don't know about feats. Okay. Uh, af after the experiment, and I'll I'll drop it, and we'll go find teeth together. Ma maybe we'll have my little, my little uh, Florins kind of go around and yeah, pluck some. help. And and I, I enough, little, this is not the first Florin time I've been a giant. All of your Florin friends help you to. Uh, convince the bunny folk that it's safe to come out and that you're there to help. And over some time, you're able to restore this pleasant village to its normal, pleasant bunny folk state. And uh, with that, your adventure comes to an end. You're each awarded your requisite, what, 300 Bartholomew bucks uh, for completing the adventure. And those of you who can continue to gain experience do, which I think is in this case you, is it? And yeah, you've completed my Tooth Fairy adventure. Uh, thanks for playing, guys. Would any of you like to shut really quickly, or are we are we good to go? I'm, I'm good. good to do a back pull. All right, Sword, doing a bag pull. All right, Sword. As you step into the shop, Bartholomew greets you with a smile. Ah, greetings, adventurers. It's uh, quite good to see you. Um, uh, can I get you anything? Yes, I would like a bag pull. Uh, that uh, we can do. I'll go ahead and roll me a D1000, and as I always say, best of luck to you. Uh, what? Let's see. I, where is the thing? I don't see. Oh, 285. All right. 
uh, let us see what is in the bag for you at 285, engaging RNG. All right, so you reach into the bag, uh, and your hand passes over first what appears to be, um, it, it, you think it might be a carton of eggs, uh, which, yeah, not maybe exactly what you're looking for. The next thing is like an umbrella. Uh, but what you end up grabbing, uh, it, it appears to be a bottle uh, of some kind. And, and as you pull it out, uh, it is a bottle, uh, a vial of opaque white crystal. Um, which Bartholomew speaks up and says, "Ah, this is another one of my uh, bottled, uh, bottled blessings. Uh, this particular one was given to me by uh, Shah. Uh, he's a goddess of uh, dark and night and forgetfulness and so on and so forth. Um, if you wish to accept the breathing, you just have to breathe in the vapors uh, within. Uh, and uh, once per day, uh, you can use uh, the uh, the blessing here." to um, <clears throat> uh, cast the darkness spell at ninth level. Uh, when you do so, <laughs> uh, if your alignment is not neutral evil, your alignment becomes neutral evil until the next dawn. Um, so it lets you make a very powerful... Does darkness have an upcast? Does darkness have an upcast? I think the radius increases, but I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, yeah, you got in this bottle. No. Of you nope, it's will. just a very potent darkness. It, yeah, it's just very hard to dispel. Good luck dispelling that. Um, so you've got no. It's like I basically have the two fairies darkness. It's actually, yeah, yeah, actually very, very fitting. fitting. <laughs> it's like ironic on so many levels. Yeah. Um, does anyone else want to buy anything? No, thank you. Uh, I'm set. Going, Going none. Going twice. Sold. We'll be back soon.